these are the solar guys and they are here to get busy on the solar system so as you can see they've rigged up a ladder on top of their truck <laughs> i love filipinos man they can they can overcome any obstacle hanging some hammocks hello 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 i'm just kind of catching everybody up here on the vlog so this is the uh, <laughs> so they're ready to go they've had some energy drinks and a little uh little breakfast and uh they're getting after it so lots going on just wanted to update you i've already flown the drone uh once i'll flow it through uh, fly it i'll fly it throughout the day Hey, good morning everybody i just wanted to kind of do a little quick update on uh, les solar uh, they've got all the panels all 12 panels up on the roof yesterday got some good drone shots of that that'll be in this video now they're working on the kind of the brains of the system if you will and uh, it is a little different than the system i have in the dominican republic uh, only in the fact that in the Dominican, I have an actual separate uh, cutoff switch for the street power. And the only time I ever turn it on is if I want hot water because the house has an American hot water 50 gallon tank, uh, which as you can imagine, consumes a lot of energy, um, really more than the solar system needs to try to deal with. Um, I'm not there very often. So I just, I kept it separate from the solar system. Had I had on demand a little uh, small, what they called, I think tankless water heaters like I have here, then it would have all been on one system. But uh, since I had an American style 50 gallon hot water heater, uh, I really needed to separate it. So it's on a separate switch for street power by itself. But everything else on that system um, runs the house. So this one here, he explained to me this morning that uh, he, he called it a hybrid on-grid system. Um, the difference being it's, it's still on the grid. It's still attached to uh, the street power. But uh, it took us a while for me to understand exactly what, when, when the street power kicks in here. The way it's designed and it's all automatic um, is if for some reason at night, say at night time when there's no solar energy coming in to the panels, for some reason we burn through 200 amp hours of, of lithium battery, which I, I don't see that happening, but you know, maybe three or four days of typhoon type weather, maybe, maybe that could happen. Um, then and only then would the system recognize that the solar is not going to cut it. It then automatically transfers back to the street power, which can then operate the house and also will charge the batteries. So, and then once the batteries are charged up, it'll switch back automatically to the solar system itself. So kind of a cool, almost like if, as if you had a generator hooked up, except it's, it's street power. Um, someday I may, I just, I kind of want to, I think I want to let that ride for a little bit, see how that system works. And, uh, I'm still planning on getting me a little small five KVA, uh, generator, just as kind of a third backup. Um, you know, cause a lot of times there's, there's no street power here. So, um, a lot of brownouts. So it's very possible that at some point the at night time if we run the batteries down it also happens to be a brownout maybe it's been a brownout all day and um you know as soon as the sun went down we started sucking on that battery for some reason we didn't adjust our usage or whatever 
then I guess I could see that. And, it, and if it was a brownout at the same time, uh, then that generator could come in handy. So yeah, there's a, lot, a thousand different scenarios, but I feel good about what we're doing here. I think it's the right thing to do. So let's look and see. This is the lithium battery, and that sucker is heavy. Um, blue carbon. It's 200 amp hours. Um, yeah, just... Kind of a big old blue box, I guess you could say, with a couple of leads and uh, some kind of digital readout. Huh. And then in here, the guys are working on, they're all a little camera shy, even though they all look like movie stars. I don't understand why they don't look at the camera. Look at it, isn't this funny? They don't all look at the <laughs> I'm making, I'm, making their, I'm making their nose bleed. All right, so here it is, wow. Of course, they're still, you know, they're still doing their thing. But um, those of you that know anything about electricity, I guess this will look familiar to you. But this is where uh, the wires from the panels themselves will come in um, into the pump room here. This is the uh, the inverter. Yeah, it's a lot different than the one. It actually looks a lot different than the one. Of course, the one I have in the Dominican is seven years old. I'm sure. A lot has changed um, since then. This has uh, lightning protection on it. Uh, this is the automatic transfer switch that will automatically move it to street power if the solar and the batteries aren't able to handle the load. So yeah, I just wanted to give you a glimpse of what they're doing in here and uh, how this is looking. Good morning. So, we uh, think we're on the final day of solar installation. Just kind of wanted to give you a timeline of how, how the guys have worked on this project. Uh, they started on a Monday. Uh, they came in, they got set up with their um, personal things. They got had breakfast, uh, and then they got busy. Uh, first thing they did was put the panels up on the roof. And I've got several drone shots we'll show you of that. That took the rest of Monday. It's 12 panels uh, all in all. There's a railing system that's attached to the roof. And then the panels go on that. Um, had a pretty good rainstorm that night. Uh, but the guys camped out. This is where they camped out under our carport here. They have their... I didn't, I didn't video it, but they have three, two or three tents they set up right in here. And they've got their little gas cooking stove and uh, some hammocks. Uh, so, yeah, that night, we had a good rainstorm. It was actually kind of, they, they said they froze to death. <laughs> it felt great to me, but they said they were cold all night, but uh, they're not used to anything below, you know, uh, 80 Fahrenheit, I guess, at night, 75, somewhere in that area. So the second day, um, they spent most of the day in the pump room uh, getting the inverter on the wall, uh, the cables to the inverter um, inside that room run, all the fuses and, not fuses, but uh, breaker boxes and automatic transfer switch and all that stuff set up. Um, and they also began the process of uh, running the cables to the panel. So yesterday got a lot of stuff done. And they wrapped it up sometime in the evening um got ready for their their night time and then woke up this morning and they are finishing up they've got all the cables actually uh, they've got them all run up underneath this purling so you don't even see you don't see anything my house in dominican i could see i mean they did a good job and they made it nice and clean but you could see everything you can see here they've They've run everything up underneath the purling, so uh, into the pump room. So it's really as if it's not even there. I mean, you can't see the panels. You can't see the cables. Um, anybody just driving by this house would never know that this house had a whole house hybrid solar system. So that's kind of cool. I appreciate that extra effort. They, they really worked hard to try to route it because um, the panels all sit up here and then of course the cables then go and they've they've found a way to get up and get in 
you can't really get up in my attic. So they've, I don't know exactly how they did it, but they've routed everything uh, to come across. And then the entry point into the pump room is up underneath the purling. So it really is a hidden system, so to speak. Um, I don't think there's anything that's changed in the pump room itself, um, other than just to hook everything, a final hookup. Yeah, everything here looks pretty much, everything here as far as I know is pretty pretty much ready to go. Uh, they've got the cable, the leads for the batteries are they're just not attached. So, um, yeah, so that what they're doing is they're buttoning up all the cabling and the purling this morning uh, I think they're doing some final checks on the on the panels as, uh, as far as the cable connections and then they will finish up um, with the inverter and the lithium battery in the uh, pump room and then turn it all on and then I believe there's some some programming they have to do and um, we should be drawing solar energy by sometime today would be my guess but they will be finished today. Um, so it's, it's been a it's it's been enjoyable having them here. They uh, they're a, they're a fun group of guys. Uh, they really like I said they really enjoy each other's company and and they've been just really kind and uh, respectful to this family. Um, when they start early, uh, we sleep kind of late. Just all from my wife. She. She's my late sleeper, and, and uh, she's gotten me into that mode. I used to get up at 4.30 in the morning every day, and now I, if I get up before 7.30 or 8, it's a miracle. Um, so my young wife has gotten me sleeping later. <laughs> but these guys get up when the sun comes up, and they start working, but they're so quiet. They're very respectful, and they don't start doing any banging or drilling or anything until we start opening up windows and shades, and, and they know that we're awake. So... Uh, didn't ask him to do that, but wow, how, how what a nice, uh, nice gesture. Um, wow, this room cleared out fast when I said I was going to video. <laughs> anyway, uh, I love it. These guys are camera shy. They are doing some testing. I wanted y'all to see this because this is something I would never do and get that close to a wire. <laughs> so I'm glad it's them and not me. Uh, but they are testing. I, so I, I kind of got a, an understanding. The light bulb came on. Because this is different than my system that I had in the Dominican. Different in the fact that when, it, when, when and if solar is not available, so it's nighttime, and, and let's say we drain our 200 amp hour battery, and it then kicks over to Torelco, which is a local power company, automatically through this switch. Then they set it up through, an, uh, through a separate uh, breaker box that they've installed to tell it what systems to run. So in other words, um, the, some of the more high usage things during that brownout will, will basically be disconnected and the system won't allow them to, to operate so that we, the things that we really need are able to do that. So, Kind of a cool system. I mean, I, I did not realize exactly what hybrid on-grid meant, but I think I do now. So the light bulb's coming on, and I'll try to, I'll try to help. Y'all may know what that means, but I didn't. So I'm learning as we go here. And I'm gonna back up and let the guys get back in here. Y'all come on in, guys. Come on in, come on, back to where you were. So we had, we actually had almost the whole team in here working on this uh, panel here. This is one of the Pogi twins. Uh, I guess the one that they don't mind dying if he gets electrocuted. <laughs> so, <laughs> but let's knock on concrete. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to see let y'all see these guys working on this. I would never touch this because I I want to I want to live I want to live so all right the tool tool mal malfunction but he's recovered nicely very nice okay we'll let him get back to their job and these guys thought they were out of the camera but they're not <laughs> hey guys good afternoon so um wanted to do a quick. 
wrap up on the solar power installation. We've had it, uh, we've been using it now for a couple days and um, everything's going really well. Uh, I, I'm learning more and more about this is a different system than what I have in, I had in a Dominican. Um, much more robust, I guess you could say. Uh, it's smarter. So let me just kind of show you real quick um, what we've got here. So this is the final um, setup in the pump room. And as you can see, it's all very clean. This is the, this is the final installation of the solar system and how it's set up in my pump room. Lithium battery, um, the solar uh, breaker box, the uh, DEYE uh, inverter, and you can see there what's actually going on with the system, what it's pulling from right here. It's pulling a pretty good amount of electricity off the panels. Uh, the battery's 100% charged, not pulling anything from it. This is the grid. Uh, we're not pulling anything from the grid. And this is actually the power usage of the house at the moment. So uh, I actually can see all that on my phone. There's an app that goes with this system and um, allows me to see uh, what's happening at any time, real time, actually. Really kind of cool. So this system is a lot more robust than what I had in the Dominican. Um, a lot smarter, I guess you could say the way they've set it up and I'm, and I'm learning a little bit more about it each day we've had it going for a couple days it's working great but you can see here where they've uh, annotated what's um, on solar battery and what's not the reason that is and I found that out this morning because this morning I went to to turn on the pull pump and it wouldn't come on so contacted uh, Benjamin and he said uh, sir that that's one of your high energy uses. You must be in brownout right now. So what happens is, is when Torelco uh, goes into brownout, which happens here uh, periodically, then this automatic transfer switch switches. Boom. And it only allows what we've designated as things that we want to operate off the panels and the battery. Um, the pull pump is one of the things in the water heaters we, we said no and Torelco's down because Torelco's our backup if for some reason we drain the battery um, then Torelco can the, the backup the street power charges the batteries for us if there's no sun so uh, that's kind of what happened as soon as the brownout ended this thing switched back automatically um, I turned on the pull pump it's been running for about three hours not taking anything from street power we're running completely off the off the panels right now and each night we've started out when the sun goes down our battery's 100 percent and the lowest we've gotten is 36 percent on the batteries and that's with the air con fans running uh refrigerator you know the things that, that normally are plugged in so um yeah, so we, we haven't, uh, we've never had an issue as far as running out of battery power before the sun came back up and started recharging. Uh, it charges very quickly. Uh, this morning it was charged, the battery was charged uh, by 9 a.m. Um, so the sun comes up about 5.30. Of course, you know, it's low in the sky. Uh, starts kind of trickle charging the, the uh, panels. And then as it gets higher, usually about 7, I guess, um, is when you really start to get a charge on the on the uh, solar panels and by nine o'clock our battery was back up to 100 percent so really a, it's a cool system uh like it even more than the one i have in the dominican so um, couldn't be more pleased uh les solar the guys that uh, and you'll see in this video i i, I, I praise them Pretty strongly because I, I, you know, when I see good quality um, business, when I see people treating me uh, as they would anybody else, when I see people uh, pricing things fairly and working hard and 
having fun when they're working, but you know they, they don't ever take the, their eye off the ball, which is the client and the product. So uh, all of those things I witnessed with this group, they were awesome. Turns out they're all family, and they told me that's why they get along so well, and I explained to them that sometimes, sometimes we treat family worse than we do our, our total stranger. Um, so just the fact that they do get along so well and work so hard, and they all have something vested in this business, uh, it really shows. So I couldn't give a higher endorsement. Um, they're, the fact that they're in Erdoneta, which is not very far away, if I have a problem, I'm pretty confident that they'll uh, respond to me very quickly and uh, stand behind what they, the work that they've done. What I love really also about this uh, installation is that they, you can see there's no no cables anywhere uh, that you can see coming from the roof where the panels are. They have completely hidden everything underneath the purling and entered in through here. And so, uh, such a clean, clean installation. Absolutely love it. So I, let me go see if I can uh, real quick get pull up the app on my phone that I use. I think it's called uh, Solar Man, if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully you can see it. Real easy to access. So I hit it, and this is what comes up. And Mr. Rick Baker's hybrid on-grid system. Shows you the current production power, what the panels are bringing in, production today, what, what the panels have brought in thus far since the sun came up, what my consumption has been. As you can see, we've produced a lot more than we consumed, and the state of the batteries. Um, and then this shows you what's actually happening. I know you see here 25 watts coming from the grid. Reason that is, is that inverter is the only thing that does not run on the solar system. It actually draws from the grid. But you see how small of an amount it draws. This is the panel production. You got the battery 100%, uh, consumption right currently. And that reason that's 1.37 kilowatts because I can hear my water pump running. That water pump, um, that deep well pump does draw quite a bit of electricity. So, um, okay guys, um, hope you enjoy the vlog. Uh, the solar system that we got, uh, as far as cost goes, we did 12 panels. Uh, we did the five, uh, 5.4 KVW uh, hybrid inverter and all the bells and whistles, the ATS, uh, everything is included. Um, installation, um, yeah, all of it. Uh, cost, I think it came in right at 346,000 pesos. Um, which, you know, I, I had gotten everything from 600,000 to as low as 200 and, 95,000, but that was less panels, smaller system, uh, most likely wouldn't have been uh, adequate for the house. Sometimes people will bid uh, something smaller and then when they actually get down to actually doing the job, all of a sudden uh, their advice is that you add this, 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 and this, and I've, I've experienced that. So um, LES, I, I believe they came in and did an ocular told me exactly what they believed that I need, gave me a bid based on that. And uh, we, 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 I think we adjusted just a slight bit and then we, uh, then we moved forward and they were very quick to get out here and do the job. So I'll leave it there. All right, guys, y'all have a wonderful day. The good, the bad, the Philippines.